Welcome to Marking the End Times. I'm Mark Hitchcock. As always, it's, it's great to have you with us. And I want to be sure and remind you at the outset here about our, our endtimes.com prophecy conference in the Dallas area uh, next weekend. You can go to endtimes.com, get, get information about that. I'm really looking forward to, to this year's uh, conference. There's a great lineup of speakers, and I hope to meet many of you there. A lot of times when I'm, I'm there, I get a chance to meet uh, many of the subscribers and, and those who listen every week. And that's a real uh, treat for me to kind to put faces with people who are watching every week. And so it'll be a great time of fellowship there. Come and join us for that. If you can't be there in person, you can join us online as well. Um, on today's program, I want to zero in on what's been happening in the nations that form the core of the Gog Magog coalition. I'm talking here about Turkey, Iran, and Russia. We could call this, uh, we have called it many times, the Gog coalition. We could call this the, the Magog axis but the ties are growing tighter uh, between these nations. Uh, the connections are compounding every day. So I want us to, to dive into that here on, on today's program. Some really interesting things that are happening. Now, before we get to today's content, I want to mention some questions that I'll be answering during our subscriber-only section. And there's a question that asks, can, can you put into context Isaiah 2, 1 to 4? Are these verses describing the millennial reign? If so, will we have different nations? And will they be confined to approximately 1,400 square miles? Um, another interesting question, does Satan hear when I pray or have discussions with God? Um, another question is, uh, what do you say to Christians who cite Acts 1, 7 as their excuse to ignore end time prophecy and specifically the book of Revelation? And that's the verse where Jesus said, you know, um, don't worry about or don't concern yourself with times and epics, which the father has fixed by his own authority. So is that telling us that we shouldn't be uh, interested in, in, in end time prophecy? And then a final question is, there are several scriptures that relate to our new names in heaven. Uh, what does this mean? Talk about these new names that were promised uh, someday in heaven. Well, as, these, uh, as, as the wars in Ukraine and Gaza uh, rage on, uh, these conflicts are strengthening the ties between Russia, Iran, and Turkey in preparation for the Gog Magog War predicted in Ezekiel 38. And I want to highlight on today's program some of the growing ties and interrelationships between these nations. Now, let's start with, with Turkey. Uh, Turkish President uh, Erdogan, a couple of weeks ago, we, we did a program on this, shocked the world when he threatened a direct attack against Israel over the, the war in Gaza. And it shocked the world because obviously Turkey is a NATO nation. And here he was threatening to go into Israel and on the behalf of Gaza and attack the nation of Israel. And so this was a, a really a stunning statement that he made. Now, I haven't heard any follow ups that he's made on that threat or that he's repeated it. But this week, he called on all Muslim nations to unite against Israel. He's been, been kind of the most vocal in his strong opposition and aggression um, against Israel. Um, Reuters has a headline this week that says, Turkey's Erdogan calls for Islamic alliance against Israel. This has been called an Islamic offensive. And so he wants the Organization of Islamic Cooperation to convene an emergency summit to discuss the war in Gaza and what he calls Israel's attacks on uh, Jerusalem. Now, this, uh, is, this organization of Islamic cooperation, the OIC, has 57 member states. I mean, this is a large organization, and it claims to be the collective voice of the Muslim world. Now, I don't know about you, but when I hear the, that word, an Islamic offensive against Israel, that sounds a lot like Ezekiel chapter 38. Because all the nations listed in Ezekiel 38 are all Islamic nations except Russia. You have Iran that's mentioned there. You have Turkey. You have Libya. You have the modern day nation of Sudan. And then it just mentions many other nations with you, which probably encompasses a lot of that inner circle of nations um, around Israel. And probably a lot of these Iranian proxies as well that are scattered uh, throughout that region. So, what Erdogan wants is an Islamic offensive uh, against Israel. Uh, the Times of Israel has a headline that says, Erdogan demands Muslim leaders convene summit, listen to this, over Temple Mount expansionism. So his focus is on that, that 36 acres there uh, of the Temple Mount, where, of course, the Al-Aqsa Mosque, the third holy site in, in Islam, is there along with the Dome of the Rock. 
But in this article in the Times of Israel, it says Erdogan has accused Israel of targeting the Al-Aqsa Mosque on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem as part of its expansionist drive. The Temple Mount is the flashpoint and is a red line for Turkey. So this is their, their red line. And you'll remember that when Hamas came into Israel, this massacre that was carried out was called the Al-Aqsa Flood. So they're, they're trying to tie all this back uh, somehow to the Temple Mount. Erdogan said this, he says, it's unthinkable for the OIC, again, this organization of Islamic cooperation, whose duty is to take care of the Jerusalem cause to remain indifferent to these attacks. It's urgent the organization convenes at the leadership level without losing more time. So he's trying to rally the, 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 the Islamic nations in the world against Israel. Now, here's a fascinating story just from a, a few days ago. It says from, from Reuters, Turkey heads to Arab League ministerial for the first time in 13 years. The article says this, Hakan Fidan represented Turkey as the 162nd Arab League Council of Foreign Ministers gathered in Egypt's Cairo on Tuesday. His presence was historic as it was the first time in more than a decade that a Turkish foreign minister was invited to the meeting. It's been 13 years since Turkey's been a part of this meeting. So they've been at odds with Saudi Arabia. They've been at odds with Egypt. They're still at odds a little bit with Syria. So they've avoided and not been invited to this meeting. But all of a sudden now, they're part of this meeting. And they're trying to come there and exert their influence to rally these nations uh, against Israel. Uh, the Jerusalem Post has an article that says this. This is all part of a goal to position Turkey as a leader in this realm, supplanting the role that Saudi Arabia and the Gulf states have played historically. In essence, one could argue that this is Turkey seeking to return to the role the Ottoman Empire once played in global is Islamic affairs up to the end of World War I. So Erdogan is trying to exert this influence and really supplant Saudi Arabia and these other Arab nations as the leader of uh, the Arab world, uh, the Islamic world, and trying to kind of revive the, the, uh, the Ottoman Empire. This article in the Jerusalem Post goes on to say this. This is a, a very powerful paragraph. It says, Turkey and Iran see this year as a once-in-a-generation opportunity to rally the world against Israel. Think about that. They're exploiting the October 7th massacre to try to bring together countries and proxy groups. Tehran is doing the heavy lifting by pushing its proxies to attack Israel. While Iran does the attacking, Israel, Turkey works on diplomatic and Islamic initiatives. So they've joined forces now. They see this as a once-in-a-generation opportunity to rally the world against Israel. And we see that a lot of that rallying is working as the world is turning more and more against Israel. And Iran, through its proxies, is kind of doing the heavy lifting, kind of the attacking of Israel, the, the, the military attacks. But Turkey's working on uh, the, these Islamic initiatives. Now, we, we said here on endtimes.com, I've said this many times, uh, Jimmy Evans has said this as well, and we also said this in the book that I authored with Jimmy Evans on the Israel-Gaza war. We've said that, the, that October 7th, the, the Hamas attack against Israel was like a prophetic shift of gears, that this would have a major stage setting impact on that region of the world. And that's exactly what has happened. That attack on October 7th has, has changed everything. It, it's, it's continued to set the stage now with Turkey, with Iran, with Russia. And of course, Russia's invasion of, of Ukraine has had a major stage setting impact as well. But The Economist on September 5th has a headline that states it about as simply as you can. The relationship between Israel and Turkey is at a breaking point. And that's what we see happening uh, right now in our world. And again, it shouldn't surprise us because four of the names mentioned in Ezekiel 38, Meshach, Tubal, Gomer, and Togarma are in modern day Turkey. So the fact that, that Turkey and Israel, their relationships at a breaking point shouldn't surprise us. As these end time events continue to line up. Um, Turkey also right now is working more closely than ever with Iran. Um, I read kind of an, a very interesting headline this week. It says Erdogan, again, he's the president of Turkey, says that the new Iranian president is a Turk, hoping for stronger Turkey-Iran ties. 
Now, I didn't know this, but I guess the new president of Iran speaks Farsi, which is the language of Iran, but he also speaks Turkish and has a lot of strong ties, their familial ties uh, to Turkey. So Erdogan now is very excited, the president of Turkey, that this Iranian president is a Turk. And he believes that's going to increase the ties even more strongly between uh, Turkey uh, and, and Iran. Now, at the same time, Russia and Turkey are drawing closer as well. In a, in a uh, publication called The Middle East Eye, there's a headline that says, Putin demands Russian fighter jets escort him to Turkey. Vladimir Putin's been wanting to go to Turkey for a long time, but he's not been going because he's afraid that Ukraine might shoot down his plane. So he's demanding that Russian fighter jets escort him there uh, to, to Turkey. The problem with that is, is that Turkey is a NATO nation and Russian planes flying into there would have to be confronted. So he's trying to work this out, but he, he, his plan is if he can get the, these Russian fighter jets to escort him to go to Turkey in, in October for, for high-level meetings there to begin to cement the ties between uh, Turkey and, and, and uh, Russia uh, more deeply. Now, in a related story to all of this, this is from September 9th. This is a shocking, shocking report. Iran's stock of enriched uranium and its centrifuge capacity combined are sufficient to make enough weapons-grade uranium uh, uh, per, uh, taken as 25 kilograms per weapon for nine nuclear weapons in a month. They have enough to make nine nuclear weapons in one month. They have enough to make 12 in two months, 13 in three months, 14 in four months, and 15 in five months. That's how close they are. And the United States has consistently said, we're not going to allow Iran to get a nuclear weapon. Israel has said the same thing. And if our nations hold to that, something is going to have to be done very quickly in some kind of a preemptive strike with Iran having uh, this kind of capacity in this short of a period of time. And to me, that's a, an incredible development that, that's taking place. Also, Iran is selling short-range ballistic missiles to Russia that they're going to be able to fire into uh, to Ukraine. As a result of that, the U.S. has imposed uh, more sanctions on Iran. I don't know. It's interesting to me. We keep talking about imposing more sanctions. Why don't we just put every sanction that you can put on Iran and be done with it? It seems like we, we kind of keep slowly ratcheting this up. Now, I know on today's program, that's a lot of information. But, but the bottom line to what I've said is simply this. The Gog coalition is coalescing before our eyes. The Gog alliance is accelerating. Russia, Turkey, and Iran are the major players. And these nations are lining up just like the Bible predicts. And at the same time that that's happening, the world is scrambling for some solution to the Israel-Gaza war and a greater Middle East peace. I'm just uh, on, on the on the recent presidential debate, uh, Vice President Kamala Harris says, you know, that her view is to have this two state solution, you know, that they're working you know, overtime to try to bring about uh, some two state solution. We know that according to the scripture, there's going to be some kind of a temporary peace for Israel. Ezekiel 38, verse eight and verse 11 says Israel will, will be at rest and living securely when this Gog Magog invasion takes place. So all these prophetic pieces are falling into place. There's, again, the, this yearning, this clamoring for a, a comprehensive peace deal. At the same time, all these nations are lining up. And so what we see happening today is evidence to us that the coming of Christ is, is, is near. And I pray that uh, you're ready, that you're awake, that you're alert to these things. But God didn't tell us all these things to make us anxious, but to make us alert and to make us aware. He didn't tell us these things to, to scare us, uh, but, but to prepare us. And I pray that God, by his spirit, will be at work in your life. You'll be yielding to him uh, to be a yielded vessel for God to use as we live in these perilous times in which we find ourselves. We're going to go now to the subscriber only section. And we're going to answer those questions uh, that I mentioned uh, earlier. And if you're not a subscriber and you'd like to be, you can go to endtimes.com um, and, and sign up there and become a, a subscriber. And I think it'll be uh, something you'll be very glad you did. We'll go to that subscriber-only section now and answer these questions.